I'm joined in the studio by David Gamble Bannerman. I call him DCB just for short, as everyone does. He's a former Conservative MEP and chairman of the Conservative Democratic Organisation. DCB, lovely to see you this morning. Now, tell us, um, did you catch Kemi Badnock's interview just then? Did you catch yes, her? Yeah, a little did bit. Did you find her impressive? What do you think about her? I think, I mean, I think Kemi is very gutsy and she's doing a great job on the trade front. I mean, I suppose the question that you asked is like the control of Michael Gove, alleged control of Michael mm. Gove and, and being very close. She resigned as head of candidates, Conservative Party, to back him in 2019. So Why I is this alliance with Michael Gove so problematic for so <laughs> many Tories? I, th I think a lot of Tory MPs don't trust Mr Gove, I'm afraid. Although uh, Mr Gove is not here to defend himself no, against he's not. such allegations. Uh, and he has been a great but minister in the past. But don't trust him because of the knifing of Boris, presumably. Well, that was all. That's all part of it. Um, but it, it's a complex picture, like like all of these things are. But I, all I can say is that that is an issue that has been raised with me. All certainly. right. Okay. So yeah. that's an issue. Her closeness to go potentially. Yeah. Um, do you agree with one former cabinet minister who said this week, "We know Rishi is absolutely useless, but replacing him now would be an extraordinary act of self sabotage." <laughs> I don't agree, actually. I mean, I think there's time to turn things around with really? a new leader. Yes, I do. I mean, remember Boris took over in June 2019. I know, but are you still holding 9%. a candle for Boris Johnson? Is this realistic? It's, no, it's not about Boris. I mean, Boris could be part of a team, by the way. I think I would make him vice chairman, if he wants it, to campaign on the Red Wall as part of a new leadership team. But he's not an MP. It's not really realistic mm. to bring him back at this point. OK, so who would head up a new leadership team, then, if not well, Boris? Well, I would look to Suella uh, Braverman. But I think she's she has not been very brave. Popular in the country, is she? Well, remember Maggie Thatcher wasn't very popular. Mm. I think she says a lot of gutsy but things. But is Suella the next Thatcher? I mean, actually, people today in the papers have cited Kemi as being the next Thatcher. She's very yeah. clear ideologically. Yeah, she, she, you know, she's black and white. She makes some, uh, you know, tough decisions, Kemi, which I do admire. And there mm. is that characteristic. But isn't Suella just so marmite? Uh, to some extent, as again, as Thatcher was, but I mean, also Jacob, Pretty Patel, you know, there's, there's a number of. Yes, Do Jacob. Do we think Rizmo. Jacob goes down well on the council estates of the UK? Well, funny enough, I think he does. In, in a kind of Farage way, he's quite popular with builders, decorators, mm. with taxi drivers, you know. Um, I uh, mean, maybe so let's as, not write as him a off. presenter on GB News, but not necessarily as Prime Minister. Well, uh, I think. Not uh, as to, I'm fond of To be honest, you know, I believe in the strength of polling. You have to kind okay. of look at the polling and see how well, he plays. We're talking of polling. Yeah. I'm intrigued by yeah. your response to this. We yeah. had that poll in the yeah. Telegraph, which was a uh, yes. uh, yeah. poll that was carried yeah. out by an organisation called the Conservative Britain Alliance. Mm. Now, this has been linked to Peter Crudus, who mm. is a donor of the CDO, the organisation yes, of which That's you're true. chairman. So yeah. is there a link up with the Conservative Britain Alliance? Who are these people? No, uh, he made it clear. I asked him directly. He said it's nothing to do with him and he hasn't put any money money in, so, so it's not for they? him. Well, th people are thrashing around to try and find out. Number 10's thrashing around trying to find well, out. Well, Will Dry is a we, former Rishi Sunak yes. advisor who's gone across to this organisation. I know. Seems to want to unseat the Prime Minister. Who else might yeah. be involved? Well, um, there are some theories uh, about a group of advisors, former advisors being mentioned. I don't know if Dominic Cummings is in there. I'm, I'm not, Ooh, saying, he, I'm not saying he is but hang on or a minute. not, but Lord he is a former Frost, advisor. Lord Frost has been linked to this polling. So, I mean, is Lord Frost somebody that you would back as a future leader? I, I think I know uh, him very well, but 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 he's. Uh, I don't think he wrote. You know, I don't think he's running this uh, outfit. I think he just wrote the op-ed that went with it. Actually, really commenting on the poll. Mm. Um, it's not his outfit. I have discussed it briefly with him. Um, no, it's a mystery actually. But uh, there may be some disaffected donors out there. There's quite a few, I'm afraid, at the moment. Uh, behind it. But I think the message is very clear. This poll is seven times the normal size of a poll. And it says we're heading for a cliff. You know, it's catastrophe yes. time. Uh, and, you know, I praise Simon Clark for being brave enough do to you? say I this. Mean, he made yeah, a, I do. He didn't he embarrass himself a bit last week? I mean, no, maybe he wanted um, to take others over the top and he just looked like a lone wolf out no, there No, it's own. not. He didn't do it from that uh, point of view. It's. I think this is a bit like a volcano. There's an awful lot going on underneath the surface. And you get a few explosions here and there, like the Simon Clark article, mm. which is unexpected. I didn't expect that. Um, is this not just because 
you don't really like Rishi Sunak and you never wanted him to be Prime Minister because he wasn't the grassroots choice. It's not personal to him. I mean, the CEO's view is that no one elected him. I mean, the members didn't elect him and MPs didn't elect him. Um, so it was a bit of an appointment, really. And that doesn't help when it comes to these storms. You know, you have shallow roots. Uh, it's not personal mm. to him. There was a lack of I mean, democracy. He was unopposed by MPs, but obviously it didn't go to the country, so to speak. It didn't go to no. the membership at that point for no, the second didn't. time round after yeah. he lost to Liz Trust. Yeah. I mean, the other argument, of course, is, is mm. that, yes, the Tories are, according to the pollsters, facing almost certain electoral defeat, maybe yeah. even um, yeah. such a bad electoral drubbing that we go back to the days of 1997. Yeah. And therefore, yeah. if you listen to the campaign director, Isaac Levado, it's quite compelling for him to say, well, it's a case of unite or die. And mm. there's the CDO, your group, and there's all these other caucuses mm. trying to unseat the prime minister at a time when the party's already vulnerable, you might actually be pushing it further towards extinction. I, I don't think so, because we've got to be realistic. These are not rogue polls. You know, we're now stuck on 20 percent. We're 24 percent roughly behind Labour. Mm. Um, this is wipeout territory. Uh, mm. And of course, reform has gone up four times since Boris was okay, in power. OK, but aren't you also making that worse then? I mean, you're, you're, you're propelling reform forward. You're effectively just being a wrecker here. I mean, no, you're, you're, you're no, getting your, no. your money on Suella. Who else is? Well, uh, Suella and others, you know, there's a number. Well, who else? Of, but, well, as I say, Jacob and, and Pretty, I think, mm. more centre-right. No, I tell you what, the way I look at it, I'm a marketing man. We are missing uh, Conservative voters. They're on strike. You look at those last four by-elections, uh, it wasn't a swing to Labour. One of them actually went against Labour, mid-beds, mm. I think it was. But you had 20,000 missing Tories and yes. every single one apathy. of those by-elections. Exactly. Well, not apathy. I think it was a... Conservatives show the disapproval by not turning yeah. up, right? Now, if you had the right leader that appealed to that sensibility with the right policies, mm. I mean, even when Sunak and Hunt talk about cutting taxes, they're not now believed because four months ago they were saying it wasn't possible. Although let's see what's put in the budget. Final well, question. that helps. Are the best people to lead this organisation on the right um, a sort of dream ticket of Boris Johnson and Nigel Farage? I'd like to see Nigel come back to the Conservative Party. Was Beckenham Conservatives? And he is a Tory, he is a Thatcherite mm. Tory. But um, wouldn't him and Boris teaming up be an ideal situation for people in the season? Well, the polls show they would, um, but Boris isn't an MP. Uh, well, Nigel got an MP either. But So uh, I think you can get them involved. I think what I'd like to see is a strong Eurosceptic team yeah. that wins back the Brexit voters that have gone missing. OK, so you're going to carry on the fight against the Prime Minister, effectively. That's what I'm getting from you this morning. Well, I, I'm afraid so. It's not a pretty thing to do, but actually for the good of the country and the party, we do not want 10 years of Labour. That's an utter disaster, and that's where we're heading. And I remember that as a candidate. In 2001, okay. uh, we got one net uh, Tory MP gain. David Campbell-Bannerman, thank you very much indeed. For